All right, welcome back to the Mad County Build Series. And on today's show, we are going to take you through on how you properly install a pocket door frame. So I'm all done framing the upstairs and the downstairs, but I have these pocket door frames to put in. That's the last step. And I'll go through and show you how to do that. I have one up here that I have to do that's on a wood subfloor and then I have a couple downstairs on the concrete floor that I have to do, so I'll show you how to do it on both of them. It's pretty much similar, it's just how you fasten them to the concrete and the wood is different. So, let's get started. So we got this opening right here that will have a pocket door and it will end up just like this one. Some people don't like these, um, I love them. Um, for certain situations like this. I want this to be a pass-through. I don't want to have a door opening into where we're going to have vanities or into that room because we're going to have a storage going all the way up. And you can just leave this open if you'd like. This is going to be our girls' bathroom, so there will be a vanity on this side and a vanity on that side. This is a hallway right here, so by having this a pocket door, it won't have to open out into the hallway and it won't have to open up into the bathroom affecting either of the vanities. So I chose to do a pocket door here and then a pocket door to pass through to where the toilet and shower is going to be. So this is how it will look once it's installed. It's pretty simple. You can buy these pre-made. Um, you can make them, but it's a little more time consuming than just buying them. And I've had really good luck with these and uh, so I'm gonna keep using them. First thing we gotta do is unpackage this thing. Um, it'll come just looking just like this. All the hardware is usually stapled in a bag on there. And the manufacturer that I use gives you the rough openings on these. So this will be this one right here. The rough opening would be 66 by 84 and a half. So 32 by 80 pocket door rough opening is double the door size plus two inches. Your rough opening height is an additional two inches. So instead of 82 and a half, it's gonna be 84 and a half. So I have that all prepared and now we're gonna get this thing put in. All right, now one, one thing you want to look at is most of these are going to come with these blocks stapled on here and leave those on. That's where the door will actually slide in. So by having these blocks on there, that holds that front opening where it needs to be. So you leave these on until you're actually ready to install the physical slab of the door. All right, so what you can do is you can lay your door on its side and you can see that side has a jam on it and that's what will be fastened to your rough opening of your door frame. So put your opening of the door frame up and then you look at the piece that goes on here and this has the track in it that the door wheels will ride in and then all this does is you just slip that over that bottom And then this slips right under there. And then you can screw those together. And you can screw them together right up through there. Usually there's screws in there, but I know I dropped them out. So I'm going to put a screw here and here up into the this part of the door. And then I will screw this down here together as well. If you have a narrow crown stapler, that works too to zip this other part. Alright, so as the door sits, that's the top piece that I just put on, and the screws that I fastened it together with are right here in the back of this track. And usually these are pre-drilled, at least with the company that I use. Um, and so you'll just have to put a screw in there that usually comes with it and go through this metal, through this piece of wood, 
and in here, and that fastens that together. And then back here, um, I usually just staple it together with my narrow crown stapler, um, but you can also screw it together as well. Just pre-drill, put a screw through the top or through the sides or whatever you want to do. Now I can set this whole frame in to my rough open. I still have my blue chalk line on the ground, so I know that uh, I just have to line my door up with that. All right, so I just I shot a couple staples in down there. I will later I'll run screws through between each of these slats to make it good and solid. So you want to make sure that's nice and level because if that's not level, this isn't going to be level, and then that will throw the reveal of your door off. I mean, you can adjust your door, but if that's crooked, it's still, it's still not going to look right. So, All right, I got that all stapled in down there. So now, what I need to do square this bottom up and I know with my line there all I got to do is line the edge of that up with that blue chalk line. So I'm going to start back here I'm going to put a couple screws through the back side and then up here there's a plate and I'm going to put two screws in there. Alright, so the back side's plumb and square and fastened. The bottom's plumb, square, and fastened with two screws up here, and then two on the far back. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a half inch piece of plywood and I'm going to attach it to this jam right here, all the way down. Because I have an inch and a quarter opening right here. So I'm going to put a half inch piece of plywood down here and then that will leave me a three quarter inch space which is from right here to right here to put my finished trim on. And I'll have to show you that later. Um, but I'll fill this gap here with a half inch piece of plywood, the width three and a half inches thick and then I can slide my finish trim in right here at a later time and that will run down and then my casing will attach to that. So we'll get that in there and then we'll get this top um, shimmed and fastened. And then you can see my three quarter inch finish trim will fit right in between there and go all the way down when it's time. And this track, it sits back a little bit so you can get your wheels that carry the door in there. So you'll always be able to get your door, your wheels in and out. So. We're going to take this piece here, which is adjustable, and we're going to get it screwed here, and that'll hold this end of the door uh, frame in place. All right, and there you have it. We just got a shim. I like to make some. Uh, just take some two by fours and cut them the thickness of this and run some screws up through through the two by four to make this super strong and solid because there's gonna be a door sliding back and forth. So this will be your door opening and when you slide the door open, it will slide into this crack all the way back. There's a built-in stopper and then your drywall will attach to these slats. So your drywall will come over down along here and your door will be able to hide inside the, the pocket there. So I'm just going to get some shims built for that and get them fastened in and it will look just like that and then we screw them up through that track all the way through. Usually put four, one on each end, one kind of in the middle of there 
and then one in the middle of the door opening, and that makes that top rail system rock solid. All right, so there it is. Shims are in. And by shimming that, you make that top jam really strong. The bottom's really strong, the side's really strong. If you look at these, they will move a little bit, but once you get the drywall attached to that, it won't be too bad. And I've had really good luck with them. No drywall cracking or anything like that. But if you look, I can hang on that and it can easily hold me, this door jam. So, nice and solid. All right, so we got the two upstairs done and we're gonna go downstairs. I think I have three down there and the installation is pretty much the same. Well, it is the same except for the concrete anchors that I used to put it in the floor are a little different. And you actually have to put the door up, mark them, move it, drill your hole, put the door back, and then put your anchors in. So we'll show you how we do that. And uh, we'll be done with the pocket doors. So this will be really nice because that door, when you open it, it won't impede the hallway. It won't impede either of vanities on either side. And it just makes for a real nice, clean look. And if you want to leave that open, it just hides in that wall and is not in the way. So we're downstairs. We're downstairs now. One thing I forgot to mention upstairs is if you look at these bottom plates, they'll come with a nail in the middle of each of these. And although it's not necessary, I put a, another screw in each corner just to strengthen that because this, what's holding it to the floor are the screws that go through this middle. So you want it to make sure it's good and strong on the outside edge. So I'm going to go ahead and run some screws in that bottom one. And we'll Alright, so this part, these little plates is what are what is going to sit on the floor and although I am not worried about moisture in this concrete slab, um, just because it's got really good drainage underneath it, it's got a vapor barrier, it's got insulation, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this flashing tape and just cover this metal with it, just to give it a barrier between the concrete and this metal, just as an extra measure. All right, so I put my level across from that bottom plate to this bottom plate, and I drew a line, so I knew where to put my door, as you can see. And then I used a punch to mark the holes and now I got to move the door and drill the holes for my concrete anchors. So we'll get that done now. Alright guys, so this one is installed and the only thing different is the way you attach the concrete and you got to pre-drill, pre-mark, move the door and then drill for your concrete anchors. And the ones I use are these tap cons and I just use inch and three quarter, quarter inch, inch and three quarters. And you can see that this I mean, it's rock solid, and I got two in here right at the end, and then I got one down at that end, and if you're worried, you could always um, get yourself a thin piece of metal and attach it to the bottom of, like, the middle and put another one in if you wanted, but this is pretty solid. Um, one thing I did have to do is this piece wasn't, was a little bit less than a half inch, so I just ripped down a 2 by 4 to 3 8 and put that in and that was my fault as I was just a little short on my rough opening but you're gonna have that and it's a pretty easy fix you just gotta rip down a piece of board and uh, you're good to go
All right, guys, I've encountered uh, something I wanted to show you here on this concrete. So where this concrete, the door is level, and you can see that there's a gap on this end, which means the concrete slowly slopes off. It's maybe a quarter inch. But with this plate here that you use to fasten it down, that lifts that up. And if I tighten those bolts, it'll deform that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these two staples out right here, push this down and then restaple it and then that will sit flush on the ground and my plate will sit flush on the ground sorry sitting on the floor now so now I can restaple that and we should be good got this little right angle attachment for my drill and it works awesome to getting into tight places so I'll uh, leave a link in the description for this little tool Alright guys, so that's the one that goes into the bathroom right off the garage. Got that all fastened in. Sorry about the lighting, we just had a hellacious storm come through. And then this is the master. We'll have a three foot pocket door coming into the bathroom. And then there will be a three foot pocket door going into the closet area. So. These turned out real nice. Hopefully, uh, those were some helpful tips on installing the pocket door frame. If you have any questions, comments, or tips of your own for installing pocket door frames, uh, I'd love to hear them, and I'll try to answer any questions. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, we should have a couple more videos, at least one more video this week. I should be able to have time to do, um, but I've got going on uh, the electrical pretty good so I'm gonna take you through that uh, my electrician was here this weekend and we got a ton done so I'll have a video uh, out later on this week on that and I'm also gonna try to knock out these brackets on the bottom of these posts I'm making those so I'll take you through how I make those appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you on the next video